Ashley from Teachable and our Make Change newsletter. Um, hope everyone's doing well today. I'm sitting down with Asia Frost. Um, Asia has done some really incredible freelancing. It's really, really impressive. So I'm thrilled to be talking to her about how she's done it, how she's put it together. Um, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, so I'm Asia. I'm a 21-year-old college student. I've also been freelance writing for the past three years, and that's how I've been paying my way through college. Yes. Um, now, Asia has done something incredible. She has been posting about, on average, 21 articles a week as she's going through school. So that's a lot. That's really incredible when you look at those statistics. How did that start? How did you get into freelancing and how did you just begin? Because I know it's hard to get a foot in the door. Yeah, definitely. Well, I actually started off writing for free um, because I was a college freshman and I've always enjoyed writing. Then I really just wanted um, something fun to do on the side, a creative outlet. So I found a couple websites that I was already reading and I reached out to the editors and asked if they'd be interested in having some unpaid contributions and they said yes. Yeah. So then we started building up clips and um, one of my, what, someone who found my work actually reached out and they didn't ask me how much I charged. They just said, oh, would you be willing to take X amount, um, you know, to write a couple posts per month? And I said, yes, yes, I would like to do that. Mm -hmm. And that's when I realized you can make money. <laughs> yeah. And that's how I got started. Okay, perfect. So from then on out, you've been charging what per article per hour? How's that? How does that work? Yeah, I always charge per article. Um, because I think that your worth as a writer, um, it, it's more than just the amount of time that you put into a blog post. It's also based on how many readers you can bring your unique yeah. expertise. Um, yeah your writing talent. Mm -hmm. So I think that unlike a lot of per hour jobs, then um, it, it's much more about the value of a specific blog post or project. Right. Yeah, and I've heard that too, um, being in writing. It's like, you know, do you want to get per hour, per project, or even, you know, cents per word? Um, what do you think are the industry average rates for that? Because I know there's people listening and watching right now who are just starting to do exactly what you're doing. Yeah, I actually talk about rates a lot um, on my Wise Like profile um, and also in my ebook because I think that's one of the things that freelancers, I know that it's always been hard for me to figure out what other freelancers make. Mm -hmm. um, when I was starting out, then I did, you know, 50 to $60 for 500 words. Mm -hmm. Now that's probably more in the $300 rate. Um, so I think that there's definitely a big scale. Um, what I always advise people to do is um, start out with a rate that you know you feel comfortable with, which yeah. is probably not that high. And then every single time you get the new client, yeah. up your rate by 15 to 20%. And you will be surprised. I mean, the worst thing that can happen is someone says no and they they give you a lower offer, but you'll be surprised at how often people just take your rate and um, that way you can kind of steadily build up your income. Absolutely, absolutely. So you've worked with some really big names. Um, I think I saw Forbes, Time, The Next Web, Buffer, Inc. How did you get to a point where you were being accepted by all of these companies? Um, I think that there is kind of this misconception that you have to be a super well-known writer um, to get those first brands to take you on. Yeah. Really, editors are just looking for reliable, good writers. Um, so quality is the most important. And being able to bring a good idea to the table is also really important. So I always tell people to spend a lot of time upfront researching the publication, familiarizing yourself with their content, so you can create that awesome pitch, show the editor that you're worth, um, I guess, taking the risk on an unknown quantity. And um, then once you have even just three or four big names under your belt, um, people will actually line up to hire you. Yeah. It's really just that first, getting over that first initial hump. And I think that it's, I think that it's a lot easier to do than you would 
then, uh, um, you know, there's a general perception. That those are like such high tier, you won't get into them. Yeah. Yeah. That people think you shouldn't even try because it won't happen. And I guess for me, the benefit of not knowing that people thought it was hard to try was that I just did it. Um, yeah. And a couple of times um, I had to pitch people multiple times before they yeah. said yes. But being persistent really pays off as long as you're not being annoying. <laughs> So looking at your website, it definitely adds legitimacy to who you are. What did your website look like at the beginning of you reaching out to people and what does it look like now? Yeah, so this is actually my first professional uh, website and I created it on Squarespace. Highly recommend, it's very easy to use. You can make it look super nice. Um, but before that, I had kind of a clunky looking WordPress site, I experimented with Wix. I, I had a lot of ugly sites before I had a nice one. So instead of sending people my website, I really would just send them relevant clips. If I was pitching an article on social media, I would send them links to three articles about social media that I'd written for different publications. And that was kind of a way to bypass not having a nice looking website. Um, but I really advise you know, investing in one that looks great because people just they eat are so much more attractive when you have a nice looking website. Yeah. And do people find you through that website or how do they reach out to you and like, how do you gather leads? Yeah, all the time. Um, since I actually put up that website, I yeah. tend to get four or five prospective clients per week emailing me asking if I'm available. Um, I think it's a combination of, I, I put the link to my website in all my author bios. So I think they'll read an article on one site, click to my personal site, find my contact info and reach out. And it's kind of, yes. Yeah. yeah. It kind of like yeah. snowballs on itself. Um, exactly. Because the more you write for other people, then the easier you are to discover. Exactly. So what advice would you have for someone who's just starting out as a freelance writer? Well, get a nice looking website. As I learned, <laughs> don't make my mistake and wait too long. Yeah. Um, be persistent. Yeah. So don't give up if the first four publications that you reach out to Mm -hmm. don't say yes to you because that's inevitable and it doesn't mean you're not a good writer or that you don't have potential. It just means that you need to keep going and find that one editor who will say yes. Yeah. Um, and then really spend time making sure you know what the publication wants because there's no easier way to have your email ignored than if you pitch something that they've never, a topic they've never covered before and never will, um, or something that their audience isn't going to be interested in. So spending just a little bit more time up front makes your chances for success so much higher. Perfect. Yeah. And I found all that to be extremely true um here in new york you know i've got friends freelancing doing the same i've done it myself and yeah what you're saying is spot on what is super interesting though is you did all of this while you were a full-time student which is not only impressive but how like how did you write 21 articles a week as a full-time student yeah i mean the number one biggest reason for that productivity was just i love to write so when other people might be watching Netflix or going on hikes, mm -hmm. I find solace and energy and joy in writing. Um, mm -hmm. And you can't really teach that to someone else or, you know, instill that in someone else. They have to just have that. Um, but also, I have gotten pretty good at time management. Um, I use a modified version of GTD, Get Things Done. Yes. So I write down every single task project that pops into my head no matter how small it is and I also assign deadlines and priority statuses to absolutely yeah. everything so that I guarantee that whatever I'm working on it's always the most important most pressing assignment whether it's for school or freelancing and that has helped me stay on top of every single deadline um yeah, the, yeah. so those are probably Love what you do, which I know yeah. sounds corny, but it's true. Yeah. <laughs> and then also track everything religiously. <laughs> so do you have any kind of dream publication that you're dying to write for? Any kind of dream position that you're working toward? 
Well, I've actually been pretty lucky because uh, so far everyone on my dream publication list um, mm -hmm. I've gotten the chance to write for. So um, yeah, I used to really want to write for the New York Times, but since I don't want to be, I, I'm not as interested in journalism anymore. Um, so the only way that I could probably get in the New York Times would be an opinion piece or a modern love piece. Yeah. So I, I'm going to keep working on that. I'm trying to think yeah. of an opinion that I have that's unique enough and relevant enough to be in the New York Times. And when that happens, maybe I'll pitch them. And I love just the way that you explain that right there. You know, it's like you know what the outlet wants and you're waiting to find that match rather than just writing something and throwing it out there. You know, you're solving a pain point for the Times rather than just, just writing something. Yeah, yeah, that's a great way to put it. Yeah. Um, so you are also writing a book. Could you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, so um, I wrote a book called How to Start a Freelance, Freelance Writing Career from Scratch. Um, it's the manual that I wish that I had had in uh, freshman year. I think it could have <laughs> made that journey a little easier, a little less bumpy. Yeah. Um, so it's just full of really practical advice, um, how to find your writing niches, how to find publications that'll pay you, yeah. how to write your first contract. Um, yeah. Very cool. Um, and I know we'll definitely be linking to it in our post um, and also in the Make Change newsletter. Um, but if it isn't too much to ask, what are, what are like one to two big tips for someone um, who's freelance writing that you're talking about in your book? Well, I think that I kind of mentioned this in some of my other answers, but so much of it comes down to the pitch that you send to the editor. So yeah. A lot of publications actually put pitch guidelines on their website, mm -hmm. and if you don't follow that format to a T, you're really doing yourself a disservice. Mm -hmm. So following their guidelines, but then also infusing your pitch with some personality and yeah. giving it a, your unique writing voice is really important because it's basically their preview for what you would produce if they hired you. So I think that crafting a pitch is one of the essential characteristics. Being able to craft a good pitch is one of the essential characteristics for a effective freelancer. Absolutely, absolutely. And then I know you're kind of, um, you're graduating. So exciting, congratulations. Um, Thank you. And Asia does have a job that she's moving into, um, but you're gonna continue to freelance on the side, which is, which is awesome. Um, so tell me a little bit about how you expect your business to grow, if you do know, and maybe you don't. Well, I think one of the things about working full time and also freelancing is that I'm going to be incredibly selective about the projects that I take on. So I picture it more as um, just limiting my workload to one or two projects per month that I'm really excited about. And I'm actually not going to continue freelancing as a money generator, it's more just, I really still want to have the freedom to write about all these things that maybe my day job doesn't uh, relate to. So I think, um, yeah, just, just looking at it as a creative venture rather than a money-making one is going to be really important going forward. Absolutely, absolutely. So um, for everyone out there who might already be freelancing um, and struggling with how to get more clients, what would you tell them? I would say that being proactive is really important. If you really yeah. want to get more clients, then um, look at a publication that you're already writing for, check out the other writers and see who they're writing for and contact them or even ask those other writers to connect you. Because I promise, one of the things that I discovered that was really surprising was that every editor wants more writers. There's no such thing as having too many good content producers. Yeah. So if you reach out and like I said, you put a lot of energy into that pitch, they're going to be dying to hire you. And before you know it, you'll have more projects than you can reasonably take on. Um, yeah. yeah. And I know that's a feeling so many people crave. Um, okay, to get realer for a second, what are some of the struggles, right? Because I think we all feel that when we get home from, you know, from class or from our day jobs and we're trying to also freelance on the side. Um, what have you struggled with? And maybe, maybe it's not that, maybe it's not the time, but what in your business has been a challenge? 
Um, I think one of the, the freelancing struggles that most people don't really talk about is um, random or um, unpredictable income. Yeah. So, I mean, I have a car payment every month. I have rent every month, um, tuition. I have all of these very predictable expenses, but a lot of clients, um, they're great people. For some reason, they don't feel the same urgency um, for paying you that they might for a traditional employee. So I've had some of my favorite clients take months to pay me just because something went wrong with payroll or they forgot to turn in the invoice. And, um, you know, it can be really frustrating to be sending your third follow-up email. Hi, just wondering where that check is. Because yeah. for you, it's really important and it's your livelihood. And for them, it's just kind of, oh, that other thing that they need to get to before Friday and they might forget. Yeah. So I have really struggled with that and kind of trying to remain calm and um, not bitter about the fact that so many people don't pay me yeah. on time because I don't want to turn into, you know, an angry old woman. Where's my money? Yeah. <laughs> but anything works well for getting people to respond to you quicker? Do you have a, a system, a spreadsheet that you use to track? I track everything in Trello um, because that's where I track all of my articles as well. So I found that it's easier just to have one universal um, app that I use. And um, I actually saw this study that you get paid two to five days faster if you say thank you on your invoice. So I started including in the notes, you know, thank you for your business, smiley face. Um, I don't know if that's really working. It does feel nicer though on my end. Yeah. And also um, I use PayPal now as opposed to checks, even though PayPal takes 3%, then I found that it's just much easier for my clients to send me money electronically. Yeah. Um, Bill.com is another one that a lot of my recurring clients have started using, and that one is awesome. And they don't take the 3%, which yeah. is always nice. Um, so I would definitely say do as many transactions as you can electronically. Yeah. And then I know the big thing with anyone who's freelancing is always like taxes and as an independent consultant. Um, how do you, how do you manage that? Yeah. So actually I'm lucky. Um, my mom is an accountant, so she yeah. helped me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we but, have, yeah. And you can hire people to do it too, you know, like, yeah, yeah. I just heard about this great, company that will do all of your taxes for you specifically for freelancers so it's budget friendly yeah. um i'll i'll look for the link and i'll send it to you if you want to link to it in the newsletter yeah. um and then i mean TurboTax is great my mom has threatened to stop helping me soon so yeah. i'm yeah. probably gonna have to do it myself next year <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've all been there we've all been there um, yeah. So before I let you go and end the interview, I was wondering, do you have any last minute advice for the people sitting out there who are looking at um, starting to freelance outside of their job? Yeah, I would say whatever you're interested in, there's a writing outlet that mm -hmm. relates to that interest. So yeah. um, I think that if you do struggle with finding the energy to freelance after work. Um, and it doesn't just have to be writing. You know, if you're really interested in web design, um, free, do freelance web design. Um, but make sure it's something that you truly have a passion for or, or try to fit your business to your passion because when you're working outside the regular nine to five, um, you're doing more on top of that or transitioning into freelance, it's a lot of hard work. So the more you enjoy it, then I think the easier it will be. Absolutely. 